What's up everybody, Chlorine King here. Thanks for tuning in for another video on this super hot day. I'm making this video because I got into a little disagreement with a client who was not believing his pump was failing. So uh, I had already done all the tests, but I was like, well, let me come out again while you're home and I'll show you that it, scientifically that your pump is failing. And so he agreed to that and I went out there and took everything apart. And I, what I did is measure the amps of the motor. And what I found and showed him was the amp draw on the motor on each load line was twice the amount of what was on the nameplate of the motor. So at that point, you know, a light bulb went off in his head and he said, okay, my pump is failing, let's get it replaced. So I wanna discuss amps briefly with you guys, give you a real layman's term explanation of it, how to test it and all that fun stuff so it could equip you and make you a better service technician. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we get in the meat and potatoes of amps and how they work and how this relates to pool equipment, I do want to say that this is the very basic explanation in layman's terms that everyone can understand. So before all you electrical engineers come in and try to break all this down to a science, no one gives a shit. We're just trying to help everyone understand what all this stuff is and, uh, and move on from there. So let's go ahead and get started. Now that we got that out of the way, what is an amp? An amp is basically the measurement of the amount of flow through a circuit. So have you ever guys heard that phrase, hey, he's amped up? That means he has a lot of energy flowing through him. You know, so think about that when we're talking about amps and we're getting into explanation and numbers and maybe hopefully that'll help you guys understand this a little better. So this is why everyone says that 220 is always more efficient than 110 because if you look at the nameplate of the motor, which we'll do here in a second, you'll see that uh, the amperage on 220 is always significantly lower than 120 or 110. And that's why if you had a 480 three phase motor, it's gonna run at 480, it's gonna run at a lower amperage than even 220 would. So the, again, the higher the voltage, the less the amperage. All right, so here we are at the pool equipment. You can see we got a nice variable speed motor running very well. We've got the electrical box open. And so the first thing we need to look at when we're trying to diagnose if the motor's failing is nameplate and see what the amperage supposed to be on the motor. So let's go ahead and take a look. So that's the nameplate. Obviously it looks different for each pump and all that fun stuff. But what you want to pay attention to, you got the 220 side and you got the 110 side. So at 220, it's supposed to be pulling uh, eight amps. And then at, at 110, it's supposed to be pulling 16 amps. So let's go ahead and verify this by testing it. So what you want to do, I'm going to follow the conduit up, which is right there. And then you see those two load wires. That's what we want to test. We want to test the load side from whatever power source going out to the pump, whether it's a timer box or a breaker. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to grab our multimeter. You see the A with a little squiggly. Just go ahead and turn it to that. Now we're about to measure our amps. So what we do here is we take each individual load line, wrap it up, clamp it. And we see this line right now is pulling 4.6 amps, which is fantastic. And we clamp the other load line. Just go ahead and just put it inside. Now we can see we got 4.62 amps on this one too. So just off that, we can tell this motor's running super efficiently. So uh, there's no obvious signs of any motor deterioration on the inside or any extra resistance causing those amps to rise. So that's a fantastic thing. All right, guys, that is how you test for amps. Now, what does all that stuff mean, right? We just got some numbers on our meter and we know the number of the nameplate, but what, what it actually does it mean? Well, when you see the numbers we just we just pulled from that motor, we're getting 4.62 amps on each load line, give or take. Um, that's fantastic. That means that motor's running super efficient because remember the nameplate is saying eight amps. So it's pulling 55, 60% of the value of the nameplate, which again, just means the motor's super efficient. Now that story I talked about in the beginning, I think the nameplate was 5.5 amps and he was pulling almost 11, which is the complete opposite, which means that motor's working way hard. There's some type of mechanical resistance in there that's causing the amp draw to be higher, which again is in layman's terms means that pump's starting to fail. And that's how you can scientifically prove to them with reading the amps that the pump is failing. You know, some common things to look for too when you're measuring amps, you know, don't take amps just at the face value of it, you know, if you're getting really funky readings, you know, do some investigating, you know, um, one thing that you could do really easily is check your voltage, you know, is one leg giving out 90 volts and the other leg giving out 115, you know, you're gonna have a different amperage reading between those two simply because of that. 
Because remember, the higher the voltage, the lower the amps. The lower the, amp, the lower the voltage, the higher the amps. So simply having a different voltage uh, reading is going to very plain and simply give you a different amperage reading. Um, is the correct size wire being used? Is the is it wired properly, securely? Are there good mechanical connections between the electrical components um, to give consistent readings? Are you having voltage drop? Just as a basic rule of thumb, if you're running uh, over 100 feet, you want to upsize the wire. As a rule of thumb, electrical wizards, um, to make sure that we're not getting voltage drop from um, from the length of run, which again is going to change or alter your amperage readings. So, if you're getting really funky voltage, I'm sorry, amperage readings, you know, don't take it to face value. Do some investigating. Maybe find out there's a loose connection or something uh, before you recommend a uh, pump replacement. So. Hope you guys learned a little bit. Stay tuned for more videos, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next video. Take care.